Mom. Has to be. What? You gonna sponsor my race car? That's what I'd like to know. No. Exactly <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for choosing my channel. Get your information about Honda today. We're gonna jump right into it. And I'm here on my S Manager software. And I have went in, opened a tune, clicked on my parameters, and then I've come over here to the launch control uh, wizard. And we are going to go over it together. I've zeroed everything out, so we're going to start fresh. And I'm going to try to explain everything I can here and try to do it efficiently. So let's get going here. So when we go into uh, our launch control activation. There's a couple different options we can do. We can have it always on or we can have it set to a switch. Uh, most people usually use the always on. It's just simple. It works well. It always comes on if you have the settings correct. You don't have to mess around with the switch and figuring out if you need to invert the input or whatever. So if you do it always on, it simplifies it. And there's no real major drawback to selecting always on. Uh, so that's important too. Um, at our maximum speed, basically, uh, when do we want it to shut off? Well, when we're coming out of the hole, we want it to shut off soon enough so it doesn't make the car bog. And knowing these computers are somewhat old, they, they can take, you know, a quarter of a second to react so we need to know that so we want to set our maximum speed low at maybe two or three or four miles an hour and that should be good and, and sufficient um, much higher than that and then you risk it causing you to bog come out of the line now when we go down here to our launch <clears throat> limiter RPM or it's basically just our, our rev limiter for the launch control and you're gonna have to look at this and decide for yourself how high in the RPM do you want to go and what is your goal um, basically also you're gonna want to think about what is your VTEC set at is your VTEC factory at like 5200 or you know, is your car tuned? It's probably going to be because it's on Honda uh, S300 or whatever you have, K Pro. Um, so if it's if it's if your RPMs, if your VTEC is set at 4,000 or 5,000, you got to think of that. You want to be at least a thousand RPM above that, um, because if you're trying to build boost, you're you're wanting to make sure you have the most airflow, so you're going to want to do that and make sure that you're on the VTEC cam. So in my car, I normally do 5800 RPM for my rev limiter to come out. And uh, some of you that might seem aggressive, some of you that might seem soft. Um, I know people that go as high as 7500 or, or 8000. I mean, it's your choice. Uh, how high do you want to go? How often do you want to change axles? <laughs> I mean, do you love changing axles, or you know, uh, that that's up to you. W what is your goal? So, basically, uh, I'll just give you the information, and and you'll have to make your own decision from there. Uh, Six thousand seems to be a good starting point. Uh, it's enough RPM to make enough exhaust to create some boost. Um, at our activation rev limiter, we want to be at least 500 RPM below our rev limiter setting. Um, I usually run, if, if it's at 5800, I usually run 52 or 5100 is when it's going to turn on. You want to have at least a 500 RPM gap in between the activation RPM in the rev limiter because as it's bouncing around on that rev limiter it's gonna come down and go back up in the RPM and it will bounce around three to four hundred RPM 
Well, you don't want it to come down below 5100 RPM and quickly shut off and then come back on. It just makes uh, makes it glitchy and you're not going to build boost as smooth as, as you could. So, before we get to this fuel enrichment, just these settings alone could be enough for you to make um, to make the boost that you need to make. You could make one, two, three pounds on this. You you could make two pounds just on these settings alone here. Um, if that's not enough for you, then we need to go into to spice it up some more. And we're going to get into the fuel enrichment and the ignition timing. So basically, these are just numbers. You're going to have to figure out what works for you, but I can give you a rough estimate. So if we're going to try to start out soft, you're going to want to do negative 10 degrees add 400 so this will get you in the ballpark and, and figure out uh, this might make an extra two pounds so instead of you making two pounds now you're making four or five um, you're gonna have to check and see what what are the air fuel ratio what, what is it doing you know these are things you're gonna have to know uh, if this isn't enough for you, then negative uh, 20 degrees at at 600. What does that do for you? And finally, you know, negative 30 degrees at 900. What does what does this do for you? You should be able to make some pretty strong boost at this at this uh, at these settings. But yet again you're gonna have to go in you're gonna have to see and make sure it's happy when you go in and you and you do a data log you know what does it look like are your air fuel ratios happy when you're on your two-step I mean it's just like being in boost because you are it's just like you're doing a pull so you need to make sure those air fuel ratios when the injector is on not when not when it's off but on the top of when you're looking at the graph it's going to be all jagged at the top of those jags um, what does the air fuel say is it 11.5 is it 13.0 is it 14.0 what is it you know if if you're below 12 1 you should be fine I mean that's close you you want to get it down to 11.5 if you can but I mean just make sure you're not running 14-0 or anything like that. All right, let's. So we've gone up, we've set up this, and and we're still not making enough boost. Well, there's a couple other tricks that you can do, or it's not coming on quick enough. Uh, you should come up to your boost control, and you should really always have this turned on. So you need to come to quick spool and you know if you add five pounds on quick spool it basically pins the gate shut until it makes five pounds on on the two step you, you can play with this for yourself if you wanted to make 10 pounds before it shuts off and and stays level that's you know that's up to you but at least at a minimum you're gonna want at least three to get things rolling once it gets into boost the engine can kinda of continue to carry on by itself but this is essential so now that we've we've covered the quick spool another couple things we need to come in here to our rev limiter and we need to look at our power reduction and our activation RPM. These sliders are pretty important when it comes to this. Uh, if you have a car with an open exhaust or an open dump, it's going to be loud as hell, but you need to go out somewhere and test this with, with the live data logging 
and basically while you're sitting there on the two-step you need to slide these back and forth while you're actually on the two-step and it's going to make a, a significant difference in in the way that the two-step operates it's going to go from being kind of spread apart to being real crisp and fast ba -ba 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 -ba. instead of you, you don't want them long and drawn out you want it pretty quick and you'll find out what works well for your car in in the settings that you like uh, so you'll just have to go through and and just experiment with these settings I have one last thing um, and then you'll have to go on your own and, and, and experiment and see what works for your car so if we are made if if we're a real serious setup and we've got drag slicks we really want to go fast that's our mission and we're we've got the settings turned up they're cranked up enough we're making 15 pounds of boost come off the line you're going to spin the tire most likely i mean it's it's just a fact of life with a front wheel drive honda <clears throat> but you want that turbocharger to stay lit for second gear so what you can do is you can come in here and you can pull some timing out you can pull negative 10 degrees so you're making 15 pounds of boost which would normally be you know what four or five hundred horsepower but if you pull 10 degrees of timing out of it now you've reduced the power to maybe down to 300 and now the car should hook coming off the line and then when you switch into second gear the turbo's still lit but all the power's there you know so this is a this is a neat trick you know each gear you can adjust for the retarding and you can basically modulate the power in every gear the way you want to do it and if that's and if taking 10 degrees isn't enough out add a little bit of fuel to it two three four degree two three four percent of fuel to it extra fuel it, it can help kill it uh, bring the power down you know so that you can get a good launch out of there you know if you're only making three or four pounds you don't need to worry about this as much but uh, it's just another trick I thought I'd, I'd help share with you you know and I, I hope this stuff's uh, this information helps you out um, if you like what you heard you know I'd appreciate a like and, and a subscribe and I hope you go fast and get to enjoy what you like to do thank you very much for your time you have a good one